Hello and welcome to another Knitting Pod. My name is Lena and today we are just going to chat about what is in my knit kit. My knit kit is my daughter's nickname for this little pouch that's so adorable and carries all the things I need to knit with. Um, honestly, it goes everywhere with me, even if I'm just popping into the car to go pick a kiddo up, I throw this in my bag because I find that I often will just quickly need something in it to address something while I'm knitting. And I would so much rather just have it in my bag and not need it 99% of the time than not have it when I need it that 1% of the time. I know what you, I know y'all know what I mean. Um, anyway, I also am going to just quickly talk about what is in this, which is my supplemental uh, knitting pouch that I don't take absolutely everywhere, but I do take if I'm going on a trip. Um, it has everything I need like if I'm not going to be here for a week or something, then I'm going to definitely take that with me. Um, or even like a long weekend, whatever. If I'm going out of town with my knitting, which if I'm going out of town, there will be knitting with me. So I always take this. Um, anyway, full disclosure, I just taped another video for you guys this morning. And then I ran to the grocery store and... It was either get to tape this quick 30 minute fun video or you guys would not get a video from me next week. So I decided to sit down and tape. I have zero notes. I have not really thought about it. This is not like some, you know, processed video of mine to give you an idea of all the things you should buy. These are just things that are truly in my knitting kit that I cannot live without. I have been knitting long enough that I have found the things that really work for me. I have gone through various um, types of these items. Like for instance, um, needle stoppers. I've gone through so many to find the ones that I really love. And so I'm excited to show you and share. I am going to try my best to put show notes. I don't always get around to doing show notes. It's just one of those things that's often gets kind of tossed to the side, but today, um, just in case you guys want to um, purchase some of these, I will try to make show notes. Okay, let's get started before we do get started. Last thing, I'm wearing the Penguino by Stephen West. Yes, the Penguino, the kids version. I knit the kids version for my daughter, but I wear it all the time because I love it. The Penguino is the adult version and it is substantially larger. This is the size for the eight to 10 year old size with um, fingering weight held double or DK worsted weight yarn. Because it's my daughter's, I used a whole bunch of um, yarn from my stash that is colorful and bright and fun. And I love this top so much. I think of all the boxy cardigans in the land, it's the best one. It's so flattering, it fits well, it does not slide off the shoulders. Um, I couldn't recommend it enough. It's super fun, you can make it in one color and it would be very textural, you can make it tonal, you can make it in moody dark colors or bright colors like I did. It's just, you could use up so much yarn that's precious and fun and enjoy doing it. I couldn't um, recommend this enough. I've worn it before, but I haven't worn it in a while. So I thought I'd throw it on real quick. Costume change. Okay, let's get started. So let's start with talking about what this pouch actually is. I've mentioned this before because I've shown it to you. This is actually a um, like travel pouch that my parents got when they flew Lufthansa one time, a long, long time ago, they tell me because they haven't flown, flown Lufthansa in forever. But it was like a little pouch that, you know, they get when you fly really far overseas. And my mom was like, do you want it? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I totally want it. Instantly, I just thought it was the perfect um, 
pouch for this use because it's round, it's like a good size, it has um, plenty of room, but it's not too big, it has a little handle, I just love it. And over the years, I have grown to adore enamel pins. So I collect them and I put them on here. I've pretty much run out of room. So now they've started going in other places, but um, if you can see, some of them are not knitting related and a lot of them are. They're just adorable and I'm obsessed with them. This one I got at Wool & Folk last year um, from the Dyer Moondrake um, this is one of my favorites I've shown you all before. It says, go away, I'm knitting. I feel like this is who I am through and through. But anyway, you just, you just can't get any happier than enamel pins. Okay, so what's in here? I'm just pulling these things out at random and I'm gonna tell you about them. Let's start with a basic that absolutely everybody needs, scissors. Now, I've gone through many, many pairs of scissors. And these are my favorite. These are, I believe, called Snips. And I got them at my local sewing shop, the one that opened up a couple of months ago. These are meant to snip threads while you're sewing. So they're not actually meant exclusively for yarn, but I love these. They are so sharp, as you can see. They are very sharp and pointy. And so they just do a really good job of snipping um, ends while I'm weaving in ends. And as I work with a lot of color, everybody, even if you don't work with a lot of color, you end up having to snip a lot of ends. I love these, they are so sharp. I never don't put them back in my little plastic case for that reason. Um, I have to say, um, as I'm thinking about these, I'm wondering if they are TSA approved. I do not know if you can fly with these. I've never tried to fly with these. I got these very recently. I know that you can fly with scissors that are small, like crafting scissors. I think there's a length um, of the blade that you can't get longer than that length of blade. I don't remember what it is. But another um, little trick, if you just don't even want to deal with it, you know, um, they sell these scissors like at Target or Walmart or Walgreens for cutting babies' fingernails. They're like really dull and they have like a rounded tip. I have found those work great also. And I, when I go on a flight, I actually put those instead of something sharp. I've also used cuticle scissors. They're really nice and sharp. Um, my point is something sharp really helps not end up fraying yarn, like cuts it really cleanly so that when you are, you weave in a tail, you snip it, you want it to have a nice, smooth, crisp edge. And I have found these are the best. So if you have a local sewing shop of any kind, go and see if they have some snippers. I don't know what this brand is. Literally, they were sold just like this for $5. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I can't live without a good pair of scissors. Um, I don't know what knitter doesn't need them, but uh, fabric like sewing scissors are fantastic. All right, we're zipping right along. Number two, a measuring tape. And I have to say, I really want a new measuring tape. This is just a regular old strip measuring tape. I like it because I can measure um, very easily somebody's, you know, hat head. If I want to make them a hat, like one of my kids, or if I want to see how um, it says in a pattern, you know, knit 12 inches, I've got my measuring tape that's nice and flat and long. So I can measure shawl depth. Just, I really like having this strip However, I am on the hunt for one that retracts back into its own case because this is kind of messy and doesn't stay nice and secure. So I would like to find one that I like and I haven't. Um, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know. I haven't been going to yarn shops that often lately, so I haven't been able to see what's out there in person. But if there's a brand you love, please let me know. But this is definitely doing the trick for now. I should probably have a little twist eye on it so that it doesn't um, keep flopping off. 
I also always keep a pen in my knit kit. This is my favorite pen. It is purple, therefore I love it. It is a gel, it's Pilot G2 O5 um, thickness. It's just random, but it's really good for marking up patterns because you know I love a paper pattern. I do not like having patterns digitally and following them. I really like to be able to mark up a pattern and this pen always stays in my knit kit. Excuse Scout is barking outside, but she didn't want to come in and I don't have a lot of time to fight with a stubborn dog, so we're just plowing ahead. Okay, this little guy is a tube of tapestry needles and I cannot live without it. I bought it at a local yarn shop and honestly what I love about it is it's this sturdy tube with a very sturdy lid so they are contained and don't fall out. That would drive me bonkers. This is sort of like what I want to find for this, like a nice secure one that's not constantly making a mess and stays neat and tidy. This guy came with lots of tapestry needles. However, none of them do I love as much as this one. And I have no idea where I got this tapestry needle. It's old as heck. I have lost and found her many times. But what I like about her is number one, she's super cute. I love the color. It makes me happy. I also loved a bent tip tapestry needle. I find the weaving in ends is so much easier with it. I would love to find another one that's slightly thinner for a tighter gauge um, weaving in ends, but I could not live without a good amount of tapestry needles. They're just so handy for picking up stitches or for weaving in ends. Some of them are smaller. Some of them do not have, they have a straight edge at the bottom. So just a variety. This guy was not expensive. Let's see if I can see the brand Bryson something i cannot there's a label um it's from oregon eugene oregon brysonknits.com i'm sure there's a million little tubes like this but i really like that they are secured in their own little container okay these are a new addition from my twists and turns mcal from last year these are clover um cable needles in different sizes. I definitely could take this one away and not have it in my knit kit, but these two I use for so much more than cabling. Of course, they're fantastic for cabling. I really like their size. They've got this little dip. If you're newer to cabling, it feels more secure to drop your stitches off when it has that little dip. But also what I really like um, using these for is that anytime you discover something has happened, this happens all the time, I'm trying to think of a specific example, but you've either accidentally dropped a bunch of stitches, like sometimes when there's a lot of stitches on your needles and you're using stainless steel needles, they slip off when you're trying, you're fiddling with something or you've realized you've made a mistake 10 stitches back. I like to slide stitches on this and drop them down then I can work and fix whatever I'm fixing and then pop these back on. So they're just a good way to securely drop some uh, stitches off and keep them on hold while you work on fixing an issue kind of further back in your fabric. Does that make sense? I just find that these are really handy because you could kind of do the same thing with tapestry needles, but they're slippier, they're thinner, and they don't have that indentation to kind of give you a little insurance policy on um, not losing those stitches and creating a bigger problem for yourself. Okay, these are needle stoppers, like points. Okay, you know what? Here's an example of the same brand. I'll show you them over here on my half and half needle stoppers, okay? so that your stuff doesn't slip off. I have searched high and low. I have used these little clover ones of various sizes. I have used the Coco Knits ones that are like this. None of them stay secure. I throw everything in a project bag and inevitably when I pull the project off, back out to work on, those things have fallen off and then several stitches have fallen off. I don't know if y'all 
suffer from that same issue if you've used these two very popular brands of needle stoppers, but I can't stand them. I don't know why I still have them because I guess in an emergency, a backup is never, um, never a bad idea, but these bad boys, not only are they the cutest things in the universe, like, come on, look at that little grumpy looking yak. And then there's a sloth. I have a pink alpaca. Um, these stay so securely on. And again, they're so cute. I do not remember the brand. I know I bought them at Longmont Yarn Shop to try them out because I couldn't resist and I couldn't believe they were as effective as they were adorable. So I have many, many pairs. Um, I love them. I'm going to include in the show notes or maybe I'll write a little note right here if I remember to look up the brand because they're awesome. I mean, they are literally so awesome. They have like a rubbery feeling so they can really secure down and they just really stay. So I just can't recommend these enough. I don't think anyone, unless you're working on something really small where you can just squish your work down, everybody needs something to put on the end of their needle points. And these guys are absolutely my number one. And they're adorable. I apologize again for the barking dog in the background. Okay. I would like to... <laughs> Next time I'm somewhere that they sell those little floss cards that embroidery floss wraps around. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're little white floss cards. Um, they're little bits of plastic and people wrap around leftover embroidery floss. I really want those to keep this, these little bits I keep in here. This is embroidery floss. Um, I stole this from my sweet niece when I was in Dallas once and I needed to put some stitches on hold and I realized I did not have anything to put them on hold with. And she was kind enough to find some floss for me and I stole it, I never gave it back because I needed to keep this in there because I realized, that's how you realize there's a big hole in my supply kit um, when you have those moments. I, you must keep something like this in your supply kit. I have several little balls of it because, you know, sometimes you've got to put both sleeves on hold or whatever you're doing. You guys know all the reasons one might need to put stitches on hold. And there are times when you literally cannot continue on until you've done that. So I highly suggest putting some in there. I wish I had, um, a little card because they do come undone and then they make kind of a nasty mess and I hate it. Okay, we're almost done here. I do also, she, sweet girl, she also gave me this. It's a plastic tapestry needle and I kept it and keep it in my bag. Also, I don't know why. And I should probably put it in this whole little kit because there's no reason that she shouldn't live in there with her friends. Now this is super random. I keep a nail file in my knit kit. Why do you keep that? Because you're all thinking your nails don't look very nice ever. So certainly you're not that persnickety about your nails. And this is true. I can't stand getting my nails done because I can't stand having one minute of dry time away from my needles. Like I would way rather take the time that it would take to paint my nails to knit. So that's why you'll never really see my nails painted. It would be a rare occasion. So why do I keep this? I keep this because have you ever experienced this where there's like a snag in your nail and you keep snagging your knit that you're working on? This has happened to me so many times where there'll be like some funky little snag in my nails and it keeps snagging my hand knit and it drives me bonkers. I started keeping this in there, so it didn't matter, whatever, I could just smooth my nail down and off I can keep going. So I know it's random, but it really comes in handy and works for me. I think that is all that is in here. There are a few random little stitch markers. I shall hold up some to show you. There's some metal ones that are the little light bulb kind, and then I've got some plastic ones. Because I only keep a few in here because my big container of stitch markers is in my supplemental knitting kit. So 
this is all I carry. I sometimes add some other stuff. I can't think of anything right now, but this is truly my day-to-day. -day. Can't live without knitting supplies. I like to keep it minimal because I don't, and you know, the, that's one thing I really like about this, just the size of this pouch. Um, it keeps me from becoming a hoarder and just carrying around gobs and gobs of crap that I don't need. So I don't suggest you get this big thing that's gonna be, you know, bulky. I think if it's streamlined, and you can always do what I've done and carry around a supplemental thing for longer term being away from your knitting home. So what's in here? First of all, so cute. I've shown you this before. I also have some enamel pins, kind of camouflaged. This little hummingbird is so cute. Some extremely useful stuff that I cannot live without. Let's, let's talk about it. But first, I'm going to get a sip of water again. I've talked so much today to you guys that I um, need a sip of water. Okay. These are cocoa knits. Um nylon coated steel opening stitch markers. I decided to buy them because I've been trying to find my holy grail stitch markers and I have not still looking if anyone has any suggestions, but I have included in here, so I, on, I don't only have these that came in here. I also have some plastic ones and some just plain circular ones. Um, Again, I would love to know if you guys have stitch markers that you just adore. Like the way I love those stitch stoppers, these guys, I would love to find um, stitch markers I can't live without. So please let me know if you have any. I like these because it's a very convenient little container. It's too big and bulky in my proper knitting kit, but in the supplemental bit, um, I really like it. I just keep a handful in there and then I'm good. But sometimes you do need like a whole bunch of stitch markers if you're, you know, picking up stitches for a collar and you're trying to divide it or whatever. The gazillion reasons. Here's another very random but useful. I have a little bag with it. Okay, number one, I have this little uh, needle gauge. And can I be honest with you? I have never in my life used this. Um, because my knitting needles I have chow goos and they, they're they never gonna be worn off where the number is. So I've never found that I needed it, but it's so thin, I just keep it in here in case. This guy is so helpful. This is a Clover um, clickable. My kids, I remember they're a little, used to just be obsessed with this. Um, it is a row counter, stitch counter, whatever you wanna call it. I find these so useful. I got this because I used to crochet amigurumi a ton back in the day and keeping track of rounds while you do that is very much made much easier by this. But I've also found like, for instance, um, if a shawl pattern says repeat rows four and five 20 times, sometimes I use tick marks, but sometimes I use this. Um, I just find it really convenient sometimes and then that way if you like put it you're knitting down and come back to it you know exactly where you are um my daughter put some washi tape on there but it's just like this little red thing you could get it anywhere it's clover I'm sure other brands make them but I find it very handy when I need it I definitely don't use it like on every single project but when I want to use it it really helps what else I have shown you guys this before. This is a Chowgu circular 32 inch US 00, 1.75 millimeter needle. I find this really helpful for picking up, like uh, picking up stitches or um, inserting a retroactive lifeline. Like if I make a mistake and I wanna go back in and it's super easy to slide this bad boy in, it's a really long cord, so then, I can rip back and all my stitches are on hold. I find this invaluable. Again, I do not use it on a daily basis, but when you need it, there's nothing else that will do. I don't know anything about other brands of um, needles. I just don't try them because Chowgoos are my absolute holy grail. 
I don't have them over here right now. That's another episode. This, the stuff I'm showing you today is just literally what's in these two things. It's not the accumulation of all my knitting supplies, but it's the things that are in these two patches. So I cannot live without this. I highly suggest you um, get this. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on at your local yarn shop anywhere. They're just really, really handy. I also keep this Chowgu Twists Shorty set because it is handy. This is um, US 4 through 8, so 3.5 to 5 millimeter, and it is great for sleeves and socks and other stuff. I don't use this all the time. Um, it's great for hats but it's very cute and handy and it fits so I keep it. It's really nice because it comes with two inch and three inch cords, how adorable. It comes with things to, you know, secure your stuff on and it comes with all the needles that are falling all over the place, okay? Look how freaking adorable. It's like Hobbit's knitting tools, so freaking cute. Very handy, y'all. Very handy, and then they fit in here, so I keep them in here. Oh no, they're falling. Bad things are happening right now. I'm just gonna put this away so I'm not fussing with it. I'll tidy that up later. Okay, and this is the last thing in here, and this thing I cannot tell you enough how highly I recommend these. These are called pearl strings. They're also called um, Barber Cords by a different brand. This is the brand, I guess, Mini and Pearl Pearl Strings in the color neon pink, because obviously, why wouldn't you? So basically what these are, is this adorable little tin. There's these long hollow tubes. And what you do with these is, say you're making a sweater top down and you want to try it on, and you do not prefer to pick up all those stitches and put them on a lifeline, slide out your needle, try on your sweater, re-pick them all up, and then proceed. What an absolute beating. This, you just take this, stick it on the end of your needle, you secure it many, many, many times, y'all. Okay, because you're paranoid that they'll, it'll come off, but it doesn't. It does a good job within reason. It's still not like never going to come off, so please be careful. But now you slide your stitches onto here. You have room to try on your top-down garment. You decide if you need more, you need less, whatever. You check out how freaking cute you are in your garment, and off you go. You just pull it off, and your needle is still in there. How did we live before this? I mean, truly, this is just the best, you know, I hate to call it an investment because they're not that expensive. I think they're like 10 bucks, 12 bucks. So, so useful. There are a ton of them come in here of varying sizes. You could put, I guess you could use these to put um, your sleeves on hold in a pinch. I mean, I don't know. I just find these really, as someone who loves sweater knitting, specifically top-down sweater knitting, I just can't recommend these enough. I use the brand Pearl Strings. Oh, here they are. It was $15. These were $15 at my local yarn shop. I've seen barber cords. I think they're a little more expensive, and I could not find them locally. So um, these are the ones I use, and they are spectacular. Well, that was fast and furious. Um, I have been wanting to share all this stuff with you, so I am really glad I took these few minutes to do that. Um, it was either this or not have a video this week, so I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so I thought, why not share the things I cannot live without? And since I'm out of town, um, it was kind of top of mind that um, it's really convenient when you know the things you need and you've really thought about it. And unfortunately, I think sometimes that comes from being somewhere without what you need. Um, then you really know, um, you know, what you wanna take for sure. I would love nothing more than for you to tell me what's in your can't live without 
knitting supplies kit that you travel with because I would love to have the excuse to purchase some new stuff. And please tell me your favorite brands, anything you absolutely love, tell me, I would love to know. Um, that's one of the best things about the knitting community is kind of getting to live vicariously through other people's experiences. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was kind of fun. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are enjoying mid-August, wherever you are in the world, whatever weather you are getting. I hope you're staying um, cool or warm or whatever you want to be and enjoying some knitting. And I will see you soon in a normal podcast and we will catch up then. Okay. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.